Hey everyone, this is the third and fourth day of our East Java and Bali landscape photography adventure and we started off full of promise and excitement. Little did we know it would all end in disaster. As photographers, we all love our camera gear and while we can't do anything about unfortunate drone crashes, we can ensure that our equipment is well protected whenever we are travelling across the globe. We all know how expensive and precious our camera equipment can get. Cobra now provides camera and lens insurance. It's underwritten by one of the world's top insurance companies, QBE, and is partnered with trusted authorities and agencies in Singapore. You can quickly get a customized quote with the Cobra now app, and if you use my promo code SGPhoto.com, you get 30% off your premium. Thank you, Cobra now, for sponsoring this week's video. Hey guys, it's uh, 4.30 a.m. I'm standing at the site of uh, Mount Bromo, just right next to the 200 steps you can see in the darkness here. Uh, we got up at around 2 a.m. this morning. This is like the fourth day that we that I have like just one or two hours of sleep because I had to cover a wedding just before this trip. So it's really tiring, but I'm really excited to see the view from up there. Uh, I'm going to get some drone shots. Uh, yeah, uh, hopefully get some nice photos and uh, yeah, breakfast after that, I hope. Mm. Right. At this point of time, I decided to stay back at the summit of the volcano to catch the sunrise while the other two guys went ahead to capture some footage. And this is how we lost our first drone. Having unfortunately lost one drone, we went down the volcano and headed towards our next destination. After driving for a few hours, we find ourselves at Koban Sea Tree, a location where we can photograph a beautiful waterfall. Alright guys, as you can see here, I have my camera set up on the tripod. Now the trick to shooting waterfall photography is that you gotta understand that there's no perfect shutter speed for every waterfall. It's all different. Um, some waterfalls have more water, so it flows faster. Uh, some waterfalls, you know, it might be slower. So I know most photographers, the first temptation, the first thing that they do is to try to get that silky water effect. But that may not be the best for every single waterfall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a different variety of shutter speeds. See which one suits the scene best, see which one I like the most. And the other thing to take note is that um, always check out your histogram on the camera. Now when you're shooting silky waterfall scenes like this, it's very easy to accidentally blow out your highlights. So keep a lookout on that. Um, you can get a longer exposure if you want to. Try to get uh, the water as silky smooth as possible. But uh, you gotta be really careful about those highlights and make sure that they're not blown. So um, this here looks pretty good, but this looks a bit too artificial to me. Um, I do kind of like the, the little swirls that we get at the bottom here. But I also want to try to get a shots that freeze a little bit of the motion because this waterfall is pretty vibrant and quite exciting so I'm going to try to freeze a little bit of the water movement as well and see which of the results that I like the most. After 
after taking some photos of the beautiful waterfall, we decided to head back and see what the next day brings. On the fourth day, we arrived at Tempak Sewu, one of Indonesia's most iconic waterfalls. This massive waterfall lines up perfectly with Mount Simiru if you find the right angle with your drone. We're not quite sure how it happened, but it seemed that we lost control of the DJI Mini 3 Pro and it crashed into the side of the waterfall. This footage could possibly be the last we saw of it. At this point of time, we had already lost two out of four of the drones that we brought on this trip. But as they say, the show must go on. And as for tomorrow, Mount Ijen awaits.